The pre-spawn is by far of all the bass seasons the most fun to catch bass. They start coming shallow, the biggest ones of the year are caught, and you have the best chance of catching a personal best. And even though this season does not last long for many of us, there are still specific lures that you can use to better take advantage of this bass catching season. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Now, before I can give you my pre-spawn lure recommendations, we all have to understand fully what the bass seasons mean. As humans, we have four main seasons. We have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Bass have about eight to 12, depending on who you ask. The springtime in which you are probably watching this video consists of the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn. Summertime kind of bridges between post-spawn, uh, summer, and dog days of summer. The fall consists of the late dog days of summer, the fall, and the late fall bite. And then the winter time has the, I'd say, late fall, winter, harsh winter, and then going into the pre-spawn. That's the cycle. Now, of course, you can understand head knowledge what season we are in, but what does that actually translate into the bass behavior? Well, when they are going through the, the their life cycle, they only focus on two main Main things. That is three, I guess. Eating, not being eaten, and spawning or mating. And in the springtime, they focus on all three of those things quite a lot. The pre-spawn is a feeding time. The spawn is a mating time. And the post-spawn is a feeding and not getting eaten time. And now that we have a good understanding of what the pre-spawn actually means, what it's for, it is to feed up for those bass to get ready for the spawn when they don't feed a whole lot on the beds. That totally changes the direction and trajectory of the lures that I choose. And for the most part, they are going to be moving or reaction baits. So let's start with my favorite. Y'all know all about this lure for the pre-spawn and that is the hybrid hunter. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what the hybrid hunter is, first of all, you are missing out. I've got an entire masterclass teaching this shallow diving crankbait. I'll have a link down in the video description. Pause this video right now and go watch that one down in the video description. It will help you understand a whole lot about this lure and why I love it so much. And there are many, many reasons why this lure excels in the pre-spawn. But the first reason I think is because it is exceedingly weedless. I wouldn't say it's more weedless than a spinnerbait and maybe not a chatterbait or a vibrating jig. But when it comes to crankbaits, a big bodied treble hook, loud thing, there is no better weedless lure than a hybrid hunter. And that really matters when it comes to fishing in and around shallow vegetation because when you are making a long cast out there, you want to have the most efficient cast possible, which means not hooking a whole lot of grass on your lure. Now one lure that can kind of come close in my opinion to the hybrid hunter is the lipless crankbait. This here is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. And for a long time, the lipless crankbait was the deal for casting in and around shallow grass, ripping it out of that grass to create a reaction strike but as soon as the hybrid hunter in the L-shaped bill came around, at least for me, in water shallower than five feet, the lipless crankbait is out of my bag and the hybrid hunter is in. Now, one thing to understand about the hybrid hunter is that it is an incredibly fast floating lure. It is crazy buoyant. And honestly, that's what makes it so good at being weedless, at getting out of sticks, at getting out of rocks. It can be fished anywhere up shallow when those bass are cruising around. But because it floats so fast, in order to get it down to maximum diving depth, which for the Strike King Junior, I believe it's like three, three and a half feet on 15 pounds online, you have to retrieve this thing pretty dang fast. Oh my goodness, there we go. There we go. Come on in here, buddy. How big are you? I think he's hooked pretty good. It wasn't like an absolute gosh. It wasn't a really tough bite, but he got it in the mouth. Yes, sir. Look at that chunk of bass. <laughs> and that right there is what you do with the hybrid hunter. Straight to the face. It's got both hooks in it right there. One hook there, two hooks there, and the third hook, kind of funky angle. That little girl right there was not coming off. I say little girl, she's a, a tiny, chunky girl, but we're grateful to have you. And I was fishing that thing, I mean, shallow. It's probably two and a half, maybe three foot up there, and uh, it comes through grass unbelievably well. There are days and conditions. Maybe it's dead calm outside. There is no wind, no water movement. The water is still in like the lower 50s and the bass just don't want to eat something moving incredibly fast. The hybrid hunter is not going to be your choice. But I'm not talking about the pre-spawn as in like the late winter pre-spawn when the Alabama rig and the jerk, the suspending jerk bait and shaking the minnow. Um, those lures to me, yes, they can work in the pre-spawn. And, and you know what? They're probably some of y'all's favorites out there. But for me, I'm talking about when those 
those bass are actually getting up shallow, not on their transition areas. When they are within weeks to a month away from spawning and they are feeding up in shallow water, I don't throw a jerk bait. I don't throw an A-rig. I'm done shaking the minnow. And so if bass are that shallow and they can eat something moving that fast in, I'm talking water temps from like 55 to 65, that very specific temperature, the hybrid hunter cannot be beat, especially around shallow vegetation, but also around wood and rock. There we go. Yes, sir. I don't think he's very big. I could be wrong. Dang it, man. See, I, I was just telling my buddy who's with me that the, the deal with this combo here is can you throw a hybrid hunter on a more crankbait friendly setup where when you load up on the fish, uh, they have kind of more of a chance to play. Yes, you can, but especially around this heavy, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, combat, as I call it, type of fishing, if you throw a rod like that, you're gonna get stuck in grass a lot and not be able to have enough strength to rip the, uh, the, the lure out of the grass. And so with a combo like this, again, 7.3, medium, heavy, moderate, fast, yeah, I may lose some fish because again, it's not a crankbait setup, but a lot more of my casts are efficient because they have less grass throughout the cast. So I'm fine losing some. Again, I also wasn't kind of ready for that uh, <laughs> that bite. My hook set was janky. It was more upwards than, than sideways. But I would rather err on the side of you know stiffer rod and more efficient cast than I would less stiff rod and more fish landed. But if I'm fishing this thing around open water, like when I caught the 10 pounder uh, on the Hybrid Hunter two years ago, that was on a square bill rod and I landed almost every fish that bit, even the ones that like weren't even hooked that good. So it's just a totally different uh, application of this lure that you're not gonna get all the time. But when you do, it's better to have, I think, in my opinion, this style of combo. But like I mentioned, there are times when this lure right here is too much for the bass. And so I then reach for my second favorite pre-spawn lure, and that is the vibrating jig. The vibrating jig, also known by the brand name that Z-Man introduced, the Chatterbait, is a fantastic lure as well for the pre-spawn for casting in and around shallow targets. Now, the problem I have with the vibrating jig is that there is no element of floating to get it out of the shallow grass or shallow wood, and the, the hook itself is a beef stick. I mean, on the Tungsten Thunder Cricket, it is a huge beef stick of a hook, and so when it comes to uh, hitting a piece of wood and this thing folds over, it can easily get snagged. So it's not the most weedless lure out there. In my mind, it really only applies in muddy ponds and muddy lakes, uh, especially ones that have like dirtier water and grass. This lure, the Vibrating Jig, is one that I actually pick up a lot more often than the Hybrid Hunter when it comes to ponds. Like my Hunter Pond series, I almost always have a Vibrating Jig tied on especially before the months of April and May, and even sometimes after that. And that's for a few reasons. One, because it is a sinking lure, so it can be fished in various water depths. And two, it can be fished a lot higher in the column than the vibrating jig can. So if those fish are on a shallow flat that's got snotty, mucky grass, the hybrid hunter is gonna dig into that area. The vibrating jig, with my rod tip up real pretty fast, can actually stay above that area. Now, when it comes to colors, I guess I didn't discuss that here on the hybrid hunter. I have a lot of confidence in a red in the pre-spawn. They say it could be because, oh, that was crazy. The best explanation I've seen for why red works in the pre-spawn is because the crawfish are emerging from their, their underwater, muddy, uh, swampy things they live in all winter time, and they become red for a certain time period because of what they're eating. That's possible. But I've also seen many times when red works in bodies of water that I don't think they have any crawfish like residential ponds. So red is just a good confidence lure for me. I'm sure it could be for you as well. But when it comes to the pre-spawn, either red or any kind of green pumpkin watermelon variation, really regardless of water color is my favorite because when it comes to the pre-spawn, they are either feeding on bait fish in like the late winter pre-spawn, crawfish if they have them in the body of water, or bluegill. Because the bluegills eat the eggs off the bass's nest and so the entire pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn post period, they are focused on this exact style of color. And there's almost no better imitation for a bluegill, especially when it comes to size of a small bluegill, small sunfish, than a vibrating jig. And as always, I will have all this tackle linked in the video description. So I'm probably gonna scope the few minutes I got left. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna scope with the few minutes I got left. Jeez. I have no idea. I have no idea how big it is. I don't think it's that big, but it's fighting really hard. Bring it in here. Bring it in here. Yes, sir. Boom. Tungsten Thunder Cricket to the face. 
Look at that. That's all five, maybe? Close. I think I brought my scale with me into the kayak and not here. So we might not get an official weight today. But that right there is what I love to see. Tungsten Thunder Cricket down the hatch. Had to end up slow rolling it just like I was the, uh, the spinner bait, even though this lure works a lot better uh, up shallow, in my opinion. It still works out deep too. Probably four and a half, just beautiful pre-spawn bass. No bloody tail yet, so I don't think she's moved up to spawn yet, but uh, glad to have her in the boat. Thank you, big girl. Oh, this one's going on the board. Problem is, that's a good like five fish uh, weight tournament fish, not length tournament. Adios, big girl. Go do your thing here in a few weeks and make babies. Now, one last thing about the vibrating jig is the size. I'm almost always throwing a 3 8 ounce. And the reasoning for that is because, again, these bass are getting shallow. And this time of the year, you can kind of catch them however you want to. And can I catch them on a 3 quarter ounce chatterbait, slow rolling it across the bottom in 10 feet of water? Of course I can, but I don't want to do that. I want to catch them up shallow, reeling fast, getting aggressive, strong, nasty bites. And that's why I throw the 3 8 ounce, because with a trailer on it, you can keep that thing really high in the water column. Now, one lure and the last one in my moving baits category for the pre-spawn that you can fish slow and on the bottom is a spinnerbait. For years and years, I absolutely hated the spinnerbait. I thought the vibrating jig and the shallow crankbait were so much better than a spinnerbait that I would actually make videos talking about how much I hated this thing, and I was wrong for that. Now, when it comes to choosing the right spinnerbait, I am almost always throwing a mixture of blades, if not a single blade, in the pre-spawn, and that is hardly ever willow leaf. Can you catch them? Absolutely. But my whole goal with the spinnerbait is to be different than the other lures I'm choosing for the pre-spawn, and to be different, I have to go slower. And so I throw this, this is my favorite spinnerbait right here. It is a Strike King Tour Grade spinnerbait. It has an Indiana blade and a Colorado blade. And that allows me to fish this thing very slow down there on the bottom. So I grab a 3 8 or a half ounce, oftentimes a half ounce uh, spinnerbait of this variety. I add a small trailer, a small swim bait style trailer. This here is the brand new Mock Schooler, our new soft plastic we designed for the jig head minnow drop shots and to be trailers for spinnerbaits and chatterbaits. And I am making a long cast out there, letting this thing sink to the bottom and slowly starting my retrieve. Occasionally reeling faster and stopping or giving my rod tip some pumps, but most of the time it is a slow straight retrieve lure. And like I said, it fits a different mold, a different category than these two lures right here. And you know what? It probably fits in the same spot as the lipless crankbait, but you can fish the spinnerbait a lot slower than you can fish the lipless or any other lure in these categories. Gosh, yeah, there we go, yes. I got a big one. Hey, you know what? It's not even that big. It's just a, it's just fighting really hard. Goodness, goodness. Spot lock us and get in here. Man, you're not even that big. You're just, you're skinny as heck. That is like a four and a half pound, five pound head and the body of a twig. But you know what? Big one. I, I mean, I'm talking slow rolling this thing. And I guarantee you guys, if I had uh, made a cast and immediately started my retrieve this thing, we're sitting in six feet of water right now. I probably wouldn't have got that bite because my lure would have been higher in the column. So I make a cast out there, at least an offshore type of areas, offshore rocks, grass, that kind of stuff. I'll let it sink to the bottom, just like a soft plastic, and then quickly begin my retrieve to hop that bait off the bottom and then slow roll it. But if I was to immediately start retrieving, that's great for you know shallow laydowns and trees and bushes, which a spinnerbait can work great for. But for this kind of stuff, I want to slow roll it. And that means beginning with the bait on the bottom. Well, the mock schooler as the trailer is getting the job done on this little spinnerbait. It's a tiny bit too light, honestly, to be slow rolling, but it's working. I've just got to really make a conscious effort to let the bait hit the bottom and then just slow roll it. Now, so far in the video, I have talked about just reaction lures. And if I could throw those the entirety of the pre-spawn and never get a bite on anything else, I would be a happy, happy camper. But sometimes those bass start moving up shallow. I'm talking about like the last week or two weeks before they are making their beds, before they are spawning. And there are some non-reaction baits that I love catching bass on. And those are a subtle soft plastic craw and a subtle stick bait, really being subtle soft plastic. At this point, you're probably asking, Tyler, why are you saying subtle soft plastics when everything you've been recommending so far is the opposite of subtle? It is spinnerbait, vibrating jig, crankbait. They are loud, they have noise, they have vibration. 
And that's kind of the point why I'm recommending Subtle because those bass, especially when it comes to the last week to two weeks before they are getting up to spawn, make their nest and protect their nest, those fish don't want crazy action, crazy vibration anymore. They want to be sitting close and tighter to structure and their mind has shifted less towards eating and more towards protection. And so it's not necessarily a reaction bite that gets them. It's that you have to present your lure in their face. And when you do that, oftentimes that is the reaction and they strike and eat it. So when it comes to soft plastics in the pre-spawn. I'm throwing two main ones. It is a stick bait and it is a subtle craw. And, and I say a subtle craw because oftentimes many of the craws out there have a whole lot of big moving claw action. And that's not, I don't think what bass want in this time of the year. That's why a stick bait works so well. So at mock, which these lures, by the way, drop tomorrow, the first Friday of the Bassmaster Classic. I think they're pre-order right now, but you can actually buy them to get them shipped to your door on Friday, March uh, 22nd. Yeah, 22nd. And we designed the mock craw to be extra finesse. Tackle Warehouse asked for a craw that didn't have so much, uh, so much action and movement and that's why this thing works so well during this time of the year either by itself or on a tr as a trailer on a jig but for the most part i am fishing a stick bait in the pre-spawn either casting it to targets or flipping and pitching around shallow cover and structure and the six inch osho has been my favorite for a long time and to be honest in a texas race scenario with maybe a, a three or four aught flipping hook i use the vmc heavy duty flipping hook that is a fantastic uh, uh presentation for the bass that aren't eating a spinner bait they are eating a vibrating jig they are getting so close to spawning and the only thing they want to eat is a finesse soft plastic so when it comes to texas rig it is a six inch version you can still catch tiny bass on a six inch but it gets you bigger bites in my opinion but especially that last week before they spawn you started seeing the bass up cruising with your eyes and polarized sunglasses i just saw this in my most recent hunter ponds episode the wacky rig is the best way in my opinion besides maybe a floating worm and we can make a separate video talking about that but a wacky rig is the best way to catch those cruising bass that are totally done eating and chasing the uh, the fast moving reaction baits matter of fact they definitely run from those lures uh the wacky rig is the best way in my opinion to catch those fish and the brand new mock stick is a perfect finesse wacky rig application and we have a dot on the soft plastic that we call a center of mass and that is where you, if you put the hook through that you're going to get a perfect vertical fall every single time and that's one of the things that makes the mock stick super special Woo! well my goodness folks that's a lot of information, but you know what? I've got two more lures, and those are my honorable mentions being the topwater frog and the swim jig. And the reason why these lures are honorable mentions is because I still throw these in the pre-spawn, but these really make more sense to me in the spawn to post-spawn categories. Now, if you want to throw the mock craw on the back of a swim jig and slowly reel that around shallow buck brush, shallow bushes, maybe a grass edge, it went when the vibrating jig was working and now it's not, absolutely that can work. It almost has kind of the same vibe and look as a spinnerbait, except minus the blades, which I guess means it's also minus the action and vibration and flash, but that's kind of the whole reason why the swim jiggy cells. If you have no wind on your pond or your lake and you know the fish are not quite on beds yet and you have targets to cast at and you want to cover water, this swim jig right here, the Outcast Tackle Pro Swim Jig with a mock craw on the back is, in my opinion, the best way to do that. And lastly, as those bass get ever so close to spawning, kind of the same time period the Wacky Rig works and you have low light conditions, the topwater frog, either a popping frog or a regular frog, is a fantastic way to catch bass as well. And there comes a time when the bass, especially the biggest ones, eat nothing else besides a topwater frog. So make sure you have a braid rod with 50 pound braid on it, ready to go in the pre-spawn and especially the spawn time because this lure gets eaten. So that right there was my top pre-spawn lures. I know that was a long video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Now real quick before we end this video, if you want to see two videos I've made about these topics, one being the Hybrid Hunter Masterclass video, that'll be up here in this corner. And if you want to see a tournament where I fished this lure right here, the spinnerbait, and the soft plastic stick bait to perfection to qualify for a national championship and catch giant bass, that'll be up here in this corner. My name's Tyler. I just spit all over the camera and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF. It is a beast of a crankbait, and I'll tell you, if you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, drop a subscribe. Drop, you don't drop a subscribe. That doesn't make any sense. Well, what's going on? <laughs> That's the intro. <laughs>